Welcome to another episode of Galactic Ambassadors podcast. My name is Julia Belaz. I'm coming to you from Ireland. And today I'm joined by Miriam Wiedemann, who is joining us from Berlin in Germany. Welcome, Miriam. How are you today? Thank you, Julia. <laughs> I'm very good. You're very welcome. We're recording this on 30th of April, 2024. I'm so excited to introduce Miriam as our recently certified quantum soul guidance practitioner offering galactic astrology soul readings. You've done many, many sessions and uh, you have unique style and interesting niche types of session that I can't wait to share about with our audience and uh, hear more about your journey and what it feels like for you to be conducting galactic astrology soul reading sessions you had amazing amazing feedback from your uh, clients from the certification uh, documents that you sent me i'm really tempted to read them out loud because they're really phenomenal so i just feel so honored and privileged to have this opportunity to bring the most amazing amazing individuals and uh, share about their found work with the collective so just super well done i'm so so happy you're here miriam where would you like to start with your journey thank you julia likewise really i'm so honored and so deeply happy and moved by uh, being part of this beautiful, beautiful community of galactic astrologers and soul reading practitioners. And my journey started a long time ago. Basically, I am an intuitive and for a long time, I was both fascinated and frightened by this. I could sense and feel everything around me and I have a family history of so-called mental illness and I didn't want to go crazy too. I was traumatized by what I saw and experienced growing up. It was not all bad, but this was a huge part of growing up for me. And I ended up in my mid-twenties with a severe depression. I completely shut down emotionally and I was so ego-driven and I wanted to make a career as an architect. That is my profession And uh, before. And it was a very cynical world I was in and nothing worked. Relationships, career, happiness. And I ran into a world wall of desperation. But when I accepted and surrendered, I started opening up and through the support of very caring and committed people, people with experience and with baby steps, I accepted my gifts. And you are one of those human angels who magically showed up in my life and were there for me at the perfect time and space. Every time I unlocked a new communication line, it was miraculous on one hand and on the other, it was quite a natural process of personal evolution from intuition to upgrading into something more subtle and vast. And um, at some point, I think it was 12 years ago, I started to train as a family constellation facilitator. And I love this modality um, every day more and more. It is a modality for ancestral trauma healing. I think we, were, we are going to talk about this more. And at some point, and I call this my personal zero point, I understood that we are not just humans having a spiritual experience, but spiritual beings having a human experience. And um, I made the connection between two of my favorite topics, extraterrestrial life and spiritual growth. And um, that is how I found you. And that is what I do now with galactic astrology. I reconnect my clients with their soul family and their soul purpose, and I empower them for their unique mission here on earth. And so I'm happy and fulfilled and I know my purpose through galactic astrology, finally. This is so beautiful. I feel my heart sings and jumps uh, with joy. That's so, so wonderful to hear. I recall connecting with you towards the end, just before I stopped doing personal readings. Actually, only today I realized as we talked before the recording that you managed to book as one of the last people uh, before I had to close my website booking system. This was after Elena Danan's interview back in 2021 or 2022. And uh, so you booked the comprehensive galactic astrology soul reading session and we had an amazing connection. And here we are two years later. You know, you challenged my patience. <laughs> When I saw the interview, I booked straight away. I watched this famous interview with you and I was electrified. The wisdom you shared about galactic astrology and I had to wait half a year. But the session with you confirmed so much I had experienced and researched through other modalities like, for example, shamanic travels. And you wove together so beautifully the bits and pieces and showed me where to go. 
And I don't know if you remember, but I wanted to work with the earth then through geomancy and grid work. And you were so adamant and said, no, I had to work with people. I had to share with them what I had learned and guide them to their inner core of wisdom, of their true being. And that is what I do now. So thank you. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. So the grid work um, absolutely is also still available for you to do, but there is such richness in what you can offer and the journey and the focus of our multiple incarnations. I, it felt like this is a culmination of so much that you've gathered already. And there is something really magical and powerful that comes true as a result of your soul's focus over such a long time. With your permission, is it okay if we share your chart just to kind of reflect on what you shared for now and see how beautifully it is shown in your astrology? So here is Miriam's natal chart, including conjunct stars that are selected in our Galactic Astrology website's report. We have about 70 stars only at this time. There's obviously more that may be there, but we, we focus on, on these. And I just, uh, what really stood out for me from what you shared about your experience of life early on, having Shapley Attractor, one of the strongest forces in our known universe, conjunct your ascendant and then super galactic center on your Pluto. These are very, very intense energies. So for you to experience quantum awareness, being able to tap into the Akashic field and really feel into the most deepest energetics of human consciousness can come really naturally to you. And as I've seen in your certification uh, clients reports, it feels like it's something that you've been doing before. But in terms of the family consolation modality, and for you to kind of really tap into the ancestral energies and the family dynamic, it is so beautifully represented here by Mars in your fourth house and your north node actually heading in that direction and being in Aquarius. So kind of using this new unconventional modality to recognize and acknowledge what is sitting within the family dynamic how can we work with the ancestral energies and embrace them in a way that can support our life journey experience? Then Saturn in Gemini in the eighth house uh, can also talk about the almost like a karmic connection to the esoterics and communicating that, including astrology, can be connected to these two. And uh, having then Sun in your ninth house, it's a ruler of your midheaven, which is in Leo. I always find that when the ruler of midheaven is actually located in the ninth house, there's something really important about your higher philosophy, your higher belief system to be included in what you're doing for living in your service to humanity. Because the North Node is kind of sitting in the fourth house now, it's ideal placement for working from home, just as much as working with family constellations as your modality. And of course, this also talks about your own uh, early childhood and how you experience your family dynamics. So I want to ask you if Having Mars in Aquarius and Ford House has it, can I uh, presume that the communication between parents may have been quite intense at times and maybe even a sense of detachment within their own being, maybe even between themselves? Like, was there, was, was it challenging to experience your parents in your early home environment? Yes, uh, it was. My parents had a lot of conflicts and they weren't really able to resolve them. They were bo both born just before the war in, in Germany. And uh, the, so they were the war children. And of course, for them, the most important thing was to uh, gain physical security. And that was the most important thing they gave to us, to their children. But they were emotionally shut down. I think they were traumatized by the experiences there. There were a lot of conflicts around that. And as I said, with a mental illness uh, running in my mother's side, mostly, it was a dense environment for me, for sure. It feels karmic too, because the ruler of your fourth house is Uranus, and it's sitting in your 12th house, house of you know, previous incarnation and deep subconscious and things like that. So when I remember witnessing people regressing to their past lives or life between lives, when they see their life plan for current incarnation, it feels like in a way played its role to prepare you for the role that you're playing now, uh, assisting people heal their wounded family dynamic and 
find the blessing in disguise and the gifts and treasures that can come from the most challenging times, like the diamonds are made under pressure, right? Yeah, you describe it quite accurately. Yeah, the, the, the family constellation, of course, I began exploring that to heal my own history and to heal my own ancestral line. But at some point, I understood that I had to do it to help others because I was so gifted. I was gifted with the challenges in my childhood. And I really see it as a gift now. And I can tap into the family field of others others and help them resolve their uh, issues there. Yeah, it is such a deeply touching support method where we encounter the present day difficulties and blockages that are oftentimes influenced by traumas suffered in previous generations of the family, even if those affected are unaware of the original event. And this is and here I make the connection to our galactic star family's history, because through this method, we explore and encounter soul journeys and soul history that we weren't aware of yet. So we do galactic ancestral healing, and I expand the family constellation technique, let's oh, say, wow. to a galactic scale. That's amazing. Yeah. That's so, so amazing to hear. Beautiful. And I believe, you know, it's uh, work led by your natural curiosity and your passion. It just kind of takes you there, right? You know, I there's another clue here, which kind of just validates why you're doing this for any kind of newbies to astrology. I may have mentioned this concept before, but there's such thing as a day chart and night chart to put it in a layman's language. So when the sun is located in the upper half of the chart obviously you were born during daytime and it would be considered a day chart and for that reason mars and jupiter are stronger influencers versus if this was a night chart then saturn and venus would be stronger influencers yes. so for you mars would be more intense in your life experience rather than Saturn. Saturn wouldn't be as hard, more so as a teacher or something that blesses you, but really Mars was the intense one. And then Jupiter would be bringing greater blessings than Venus would in a night chart. So here, your Mars uh, rules Scorpio or core rules Scorpio and Jupiter is placed in Scorpio. So yeah, there is an interconnection here. So I feel, again, the upbringing, the experiences that you had, the intensity of that actually shaped your identity first house, Jupiter, really expanded your understanding of deep core wounding and uh, what's hidden and deep motivations and how we are, how everything is interconnected, right? And then of course, having Shapley at the ascendant, which again, is a consciousness of what is hidden, what is the true power that is moving us through life. So, so good <laughs> that you're doing this type of work, working with people and communicating yeah. it. So let's look at your website, the quote that you've mentioned at the beginning of this call we are not human beings having spiritual experience spiritual but spiritual beings having human experience absolutely and uh, offer that you have for pick your planet mini session can you tell us a little bit about that well as an architect i was trained at the former bauhaus in in weimar and there is one hero uh, mies van der rohe and he said less is more and uh, this is kind of uh, what drives me really in in life so when i look at the chart which for me as you mentioned before it is a portal to me i use it very intuitively and it is like a celestial compass where uh, that leads me to the galactic knowledge that is required during a specific reading or session. It is like a combination lock and uh, quite visually the combination of the planets in a wheel unlock the chart like a stargate or a portal and it navigates me to my client's soul history and I dive right away into their Akashic field of consciousness. But the miniature uh, readings, pick a planet, I can shine a spotlight on a, a certain energetic point in that chart. And it is so accurate every time the clients choose intuitively the planet. And it is, uh, it is such a wondrous thing that unfolds. Through looking at one planet, the whole uh, um, soul history unfolds, basically. Last year, when uh, Pluto ingress Aquarius, I started a series of mini readings. I looked at the client's Pluto alignments and 
this was so interesting for me. It kind of noted my natural curiosity, as you said, to Petit First House. And I made a lot of connections there. We have to look at our Pluto alignments now that Pluto enters Aquarius. And we really have to figure out how we want to proceed as a human society, as a human family. We need to wake up, really and become a galactic civilization because our star families are waiting for us to wake up and grow up and resolve the conflicts all around the place. And this is something I feel very strongly about resolving conflicts, as you know, with my family history. Yeah, this is something that I really love doing, those mini readings. Also, I am all for, for the whole package. <laughs> And uh, the thing that I love doing is working with entrepreneurs and um, business owners because um, it is not only about business astrology, but if it comes to building a team, it is so interesting. Also from a family constellation standpoint, how do you select a team? How do you combine the energetics of persons who are supposed to work together? And if we bring that to a galactic perspective, I mean, this is so interesting uh, how Darcy from Antares interacts with uh, Starseed from the Pleiades. I don't know, I, I just pick randomly, but then what can we achieve if we are really aware of our galactic connections and our galactic soul history? That is so, so delicious, so inspiring. I love that. And it makes a lot of sense. I've noticed that if you, I have Antares in my seventh house, conjunct Jupiter Uranus and Aldebaran on my first house. And I'm noticing that when I connect with people who have Aldebaran, when they have it the other way around, you really click. It's like something opens, there's a whole funnel here and the ideas are just streaming in. It can be very, very beneficial when you pick a galactic soul connection that is complementary to who you are. And I've also noticed working with uh, several people is looking at the aspects, the trine, sextiles and squares, what that feels like. And when we bring the galactic alignments to it, it's absolutely so revealing and it can really enhance either the dynamic of the company or hinder it. Yeah, there's just so much information there. I'm so, so happy to hear that you are guided to explore that and looking at your midheaven, Pluto in your 11th house and all other, and to your Uranus in Libra, which is all about evolving relationships right? <laughs> so it's just so fitting. It, it seems like you're really in alignment with your chart and your soul's path, so journey. So wonderful. And you are glowing too. <laughs> it's yeah, I'm radiant. This, is, this happens as soon as I am tapping into this field of uh, galactic astrology. I really... I have that much it towards <laughs> halfway through the <laughs> sessions. It happens to me too, yes, in sessions. Yes. It's, yeah, the, I'm, fire. I'm it's the fire of, of the excitement and passion. I love that. <laughs> Beautiful. Just as I recall that low point in your life experience when you were thinking of completely shifting direction in your career, just saying goodbye to working one-on-one -on -one and just focusing on Mother Earth, working with the grid work, then taking the journey of, okay, maybe I'm not going to throw everything away and find if I can bring somehow this new energy like of galactic astrology to reignite my passion for what, what I'm good at. What was the experience like for you? journeying through the quantum soul guidance course were there any modules or any parts of it that you found extra helpful in navigating that inner space of frustrations and challenges in life before that i was really interested this is a complex science right and i was too lazy to really dive into it after our session i was fire really and i started the course and i dove into that into this ancient science that is unlocking and uh, so much in our soul history and that is revealing so much. I was so thankful how comprehensive and holistically you put this course together, not only from the business side or the spiritual business side, but also giving so, lending us your hand and letting us take part in the vast knowledge that you hold. And with galactic astrology, I'm, I'm still in awe of what you created here, Julia, really. It is a miraculous thing that you created. I am so happy I found it. For me, astrology, when I started looking into it, I think for everybody who starts with astrology, it feels like a secret science that 
will never reveal itself to you, but you have to stay with it and you have to let it come to you organically, I believe. That is how it worked for me. And also, I was not uh, really active in the Facebook group, in this beautiful community. It still was there. And I knew if I didn't go on, if I didn't succeed, they, there were those beautiful souls who are so helpful and supportive with each other. I cannot stress that enough. You not only designed a new standard science of astrology and astronomy too, but uh, you also created this beautiful group of, of star seeds. And I'm ever so grateful for you, really. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for those beautiful words. And I always feel like it's uh, it, it, it kind of just happened, <laughs> but it's a result of the energetics of the collective and, in, and individuals and the encouragement that I've been receiving from very early on. I feel like without everyone else, this would not be possible. So I really feel an equal participant in what actually was created here by us as a collective. So just eternally, eternally grateful for all that. Well, I must ask you a question, Julia, yeah. um, because with uh, galactic astrology, as soon as I connected with you, I felt this kind of push and pull to really go with it. Did you have that too? This kind of, you were pushed by your galactic, uh, by your star families, you were and pulled at the same time. I don't know, by Earth, probably. Uh, I know I what you it. mean, yes. And it's still ongoing, that, that experience. And I found it really is just the recognition of the importance of having balance between refocusing really passionately on something. And it's not meant to be constant 365 days a year when you do that. And there are people who are so passionate about something that just keep going, ignoring everything else. But it there is a high price to pay for that time that level of determination whether it's health or family or relationships things like that so you know if i whenever i find myself in that moment where i feel that pull away from it the quickest way out of that feeling that feels almost uh, well sad or frustrated or like it's definitely a lower frequency comparing to when i'm in the push and working with it it quickly transforms when i acknowledge that i have to take a little break and i do take a little break and suddenly my mood and excitement and energetics just shoots again but the energy is invested into being in the garden or with my body with my family with my relationships once i take that little break then I can come back here and ideas just stream in. So I'm so, so actually glad that, you, that you've mentioned it because it's very natural and we should answer that pull yes. wave and with that. Have you had the similar experience too? Yes. And as soon as I let this happen, the push and the pull becomes more of a, a whoosh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So much and feels very expansive and uh, liberating and new ideas can come in then you are in a channeling mode right you are yes. in flow state 100 mm -hmm. i also have to confess that you know when you're when i'm in that pull mode consciously recognizing yet that i'm actually depleted energetically i need to take care of myself usually it's in those uh, three consciously realization mode that i start doubting the path Yes. <laughs> yes. But every single time, no exception, every time that very subtle, quiet thought comes in of doubt of this whole thing, I receive an email from someone or a message from someone that just sweeps the doubt away. I was like, oh my God, this is such an amazing modality. What we have here is really, really special. So I've, I'm just so grateful to the universal intelligence for always nipping that <laughs> doubt very quickly in the bud. And uh, I keep being shown that, no, this is something really special and collectively we can create something very, very magical here. Well, is there anything else, uh, any parting message uh, that you would like to share with the audience, whether your potential clients that will be magnetized uh, to you through this video or our fellow community members, anything else that you would like to include? Uh, with my Pluto clients, as I call them lovingly, I always share that we are in a huge cycle of renewal and transformation with Pluto in Aquarius, plus the Jupiter-Uranus conjunction that had just a couple of days ago. So we are in this transformational time for the next 20 years. And this leads to a worldwide revolution in consciousness. So the question I ask my clients is, are you ready for spiritual acceleration and intense change? And it is important to be hyper aware now where our attention goes. 
in which energy fields our thoughts are active, that we are responsible, where we direct our emotions, and do we create good with our thoughts? Are we at peace? Because it's the beginning of a new era, which will be completely different from everything was we as a humanity, as a collective, have known so far. So we are now at the point where we are able to determine how this plays out new earth. And I am an ambassador for that, for sure. So let's reunite with our galactic families and let's awaken many and guide many to this information. Beautiful, beautiful. This is Thank you for that inspiration. Oh, it feels so good, so rich. And uh, we have so much to look forward to. And when we uh, journey together, it can be so much more enjoyable. I'm excited about your continuous research because you, you know, with actually doing the mini readings is um, has such a high potential frequency because you suddenly have access to exponentially a higher amount of bird data then if you're only taking one client a day or few a week uh, where you spend a lot of time doing the deep dive, but when you suddenly have access to many, which you've done almost a hundred of these mini, and now you're starting to see patterns, right? Just like uh, when yeah. I that experience. So I'm really looking forward to seeing you grow and sharing whatever information comes through your readings as a revelation of cosmic patterns. You also have social media. Where can people find you? Where can we connect? Can you call out your website? Um, yes, my website is uh, miriam-wiedemann.de because I'm based in German and I offer readings in German and English and light language probably as a third language, an Instagram account and a Facebook account. I host a Facebook group of the Galactic Soul Tribe because I am guided to support all those who are looking for like-minded, how, how would you put it, star seats here. And I have an, a Telegram account as well and probably very soon a, a YouTube uh, channel as well. Uh, oh, I also saw on your website the... Galactic Traveler's Soul Companionship. Is that past event or, or something that is still ongoing? It's running. Yeah. It is one of those push and pull moments. It was, so I do twice a year, I do a 12-day immersion. Wow. During the, well, I have a Celtic connection. And in Celtic tradition in Germany, there are the 12 nights after Christmas before Epiphany. They are kind of divination uh, days where we can have a look at what is going to unfold in the next 12 months. So every day represents a month um, of the coming year and I combined this with galactic astrology. I was guided to do that and during that time I was guided to do a 12-month companionship and it is beautiful. It is very interesting the participants how they combine uh, as a star seeds uh, their their forces really to unlock the gifts and traits as star seeds and how they really can step into their mission now. It is wow beautiful. what an what an amazing aspect to to this work. Again, amazing, beautiful inspiration. Wow, so much potential there too. I yeah. love working with groups and it is a beautiful and expansive journey. <laughs> we are yes. all. And is this um, held online as a container or in person online? It's all online. I'm really amazed at how good that works and how well also family constellation that was devised as a group technique yeah. in the first place. It works fine online. It's all energetics, right? Yes. Where it's been an honor to have you here on this podcast. Many blessings to you and those that will be attracted to you. Thank you all for watching. We look forward to seeing you again next time. Much love. Take care.